Hi, my name is Cody Diarkland. I'm with the console team at HashiCorp, and I'm ready to take you on a private beta preview of the HashiCorp console service on Microsoft Azure. Let's jump in and take a look how we can get started. First, we'll go into create a resource from our Azure portal. From the marketplace, we can type in console, and we'll see the HashiCorp console service on Azure preview pop up. We go in, we can select private beta testing and select create, which will take us into a screen where we can start to configure our deployment. You'll be able to select from any of your existing subscriptions, as well as select an existing or create a new resource group. You'll want to leave it defaulted to West US 2, as that's the only region that's currently enabled, and we'll give it a name. So I'll use my existing subscription. I'll use my existing resource group. And I'll name this console beta. I can move on to filling in some specific settings about my console cluster. Most of these are static for this phase of the beta. I'll name it console Azure beta. And we'll leave our data center set as DC1. We can select review and create. Agree to our terms and select create. This will start building out our console cluster in Azure across the three nodes. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes to complete. Fortunately, I already have a cluster that we can work with. So I'll move back to home and we'll use console PB. Once we enter our cluster service, there's a couple of paths we can go to see our actual console cluster. We can select this console UI link here on the left, or we can go down to console clusters, select our cluster, select our properties, and navigate to the console external endpoint URL property, which gives us our external URL. If I highlight this and select go to it, you'll see it brings up our cluster or I have a few services already registered. If I go into my nodes, you can see the existing nodes for the console cluster. These are the three of the Azure machines that are deployed in a managed configuration. We can see I have a default deny intention in place that I already set up that blocks all not explicitly added communication. This is a good security practice to protect yourself from services communicating outside of the scope that you wanted them to. We're gonna go ahead and use the console helm chart to deploy out console as a service mesh onto an AKS cluster, but then join that AKS cluster to this existing HashiCorp console service on Azure cluster. If I do a queue control, get pods, we can see the pods that are currently running. If I do a get nodes, we can see the existing nodes that are in place for this Kubernetes cluster. I'll go ahead and clear my terminal. And let's take a look at some of the configurations it takes to make the console helm chart work. The console helm chart deploys with some sane defaults in place, but we needed to make a few modifications to those in order to join to our HCS cluster. If I do a cat against this override.yaml file, we can see the configurations that I set in order to join this to that cluster. I'm using cloud auto join for our client machines instead of server machines to join this to the console cluster. I've set up some gossip encryption keys that I've added in, and I've specified the data center that I want to join. I've also specified that I want to allow console connect to inject its sidecar pods for the service mesh functionality into any machines that or into any pods that deploy within the, within the AKS cluster. I've also set sync catalog to enabled, which will sync a catalog into a console into the HCS service. Let's go ahead and clear this and we'll deploy our Helm chart. We'll do Helm install with the override.yaml file. We can see that's running, and if we do a cube control git pods all, we can see our containers currently creating. Great, it looks like our Helm chart is finished installing and the agent configuration our AKS cluster is completed. We can go ahead and take a look at the logs to see if there's any, been any errors by clicking on one of our, one of our pods doing a Q control logs against that pod and observing there are messages if any exist. In this case, we can see a number of messages indicating that the cluster join is successful. So let's switch back over to our console view and take a look. We go into our nodes view now. We can see our AKS agent pods, or agent nodes, I should say. 
And if we go into our services, we can see the basic services in place. Let's go ahead and deploy an application and see how this changes. I have a simple demo application that I use for the service mesh use cases that shows secure connections between a number of between a number of pods. So let's do a Q control, apply F, Hashi demo app. We'll do our namespace first. And then we'll do our actual demo application. We'll do a Q control get pods to see if everything is up. They're currently initializing. If we switch back into our console view, we can see these services starting to come online. And we can see these health checks starting to pass successfully. For our API, our front end, and our database, all health checks are passing successfully. If we switch back into our Kubernetes view, we can see those pods are now up and running. This service does have a load balancer associated with it. So let's go ahead and do a cube control get service. Cube control get service against the custom application namespace. And it shows that we're currently waiting for that to come by. So go ahead and do a watch and we'll wait for it to show up. Great, we have a load balancer available. So we grab this IP address and launch, it, launch the application. We'll switch back to our web browser view. And we can see our application is deployed, but it's a little bit unhappy. We can see some red error mess or red uh, signals showing here that there is no connectivity. And we can see error messages displaying on the bottom right indicating that there's no, no connection available. Let's see if we can fix this in console quickly. We know that our services are registered and they're passing their health checks. But we also remember setting our default deny for all services. So because the services are not explicitly allowed, they're not able to communicate. We'll go ahead and create an intention which is going to allow communication between two services inside of the service mesh. We'll allow communication from our front end service to our API service. And if we switch back to our application, we can see API connectivity is restored, but our database connectivity is still down. Let's switch back into console and take a look at how to fix that. We'll create another intention from our API service into our database service and allow communication again. And if we switch back in, we can see our database connectivity is established and our beautiful HashiCorp logos are appearing. Now that we've allowed connectivity, let's remove those rules and see what happens. We'll move back into console. We'll select our front end rule and we'll delete it as well as delete our database rule and switch back into our application. We can see our application is back to a non, not able to connect state. And not that this is recommended, but we'll remove our default deny rule. And our application comes back online. So there you have it. You've seen how in a few moments we can deploy out a, our console Helm chart onto an AKS cluster, joining it to a HashiCorp console service on Azure cluster deploy an application that we're able to configure zero trust security between the pods because this is configured in HashiCorp console service on Azure in a secure by default configuration, that communication between those pods is encrypted since it's running through the service mesh. This is just a simple preview of what we have in store and the use cases get a lot more exciting when we start to talk about how we can bring in virtual machines both within Azure as well as outside of Azure into the mesh configuration. Stay tuned for more information in the future, and I hope you enjoyed this preview. Have a good night.